Let's talk today about uh, connective tissue diseases. I am Dr. Akhil Shah, Professor in Skin and VD at uh, Index Medical College Hospital and Research Center at Indore. So let's talk something about connective tissue diseases. Now, which are the connective tissue disorders? The <clears throat> diseases include lupus erythematosus in which discoid lupus erythematosus, subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus and systemic lupus erythematosus are there. Scleroderma, morphia or systemic sclerosis, dermatomyositis or polymyositis, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome, mixed connective tissue disease or MCTD, and anti-lipid, anti-phospholipid, anti-body syndrome. These are the uh, types or names or broad classification of the connective tissue uh, disorders. Let's take them one by one. Well, first of all, and the most important, the most prevalent, and the most seen in clinical practice is lupus erythematosus or LE in short form. <clears throat> now, lupus erythematosus comes in types. Which are the types? Cutaneous lupus erythematosus will be classified into three subtypes acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus wherein the morphological features include Miller rash or moriboliform rash or bullous lesions. Subacute cutaneous uh, lupus erythematosus comes in morphological variants of annular and papillar squamous uh, lesions. The third variety is chronic cutaneous lupus erythematosus which comes in the form of discoid lupus erythematosus. <clears throat> These are the three broad morphological classifications of lupus erythematosus or in short called lupus. What is the pathogenesis of cutaneous lupus erythematosus? What leads to cutaneous lupus erythematosus? First and foremost are the genetic factors. As you know, all the diseases, autoimmune, others, have now been identified to have some or the other genetic or hereditary association. Every disease has been allotted or classified according to its HLA. Okay. <clears throat> now, the LA also has a susceptibility to HLA antigens. Other triggers, environmental triggers. Ultraviolet light or UV light, the UV exposure to the skin induces an inflammatory cascade releasing pro-inflammatory mediators like cytokines. And apoptosis is another method through which there is environmentally triggered reaction leading to lupus erythematosus. Third, and the most, uh, and the foremost, and the most important ones are the immunological factors. <clears throat> Immunology plays a very important role in all the autoimmune and genetically transferred disorders. What immunological disturbances are happening in lipid erythematosus? First is malfunctioning T regulatory cells. There are two types of T cells, regulatory T cells and killer T cells. Now, regulatory T cells are malfunctioning. What in, uh, cytokines and what intermediates are involved? Interleukin 18 is a, a pro-inflammatory mediator leading to immunological factors. Okay. Now, <clears throat> how is acute cutaneous LE classified, right? 
<clears throat> first LE is acute cutaneous LE. It could be lo localized uh, acute cutaneous liver erythematosus, which has a characteristic butterfly facial rash. Okay. LE is classified as a classical butterfly rash on the face. In a female, very importantly, when it is associated with photosensitivity or sun exposure leading to facial rash, it is called localized acute cutaneous lipid erythematosus. Okay. Next is generalized ACLE. When it is not confined to the face in a particular location, <clears throat> when there is a widespread maculopapular rash, which is classically found in a photo exposed or photo distributed pattern, which are the photo distributed sites? Face, neck, lower neck, uh, upper neck, upper back, then upper chest, hands, arms, fingers, legs, these the open legs, which are, which are photo exposed, are the classical sites for photo distribution. <clears throat> and on those photo distributed or photo exposed sites is a maculopapular rash develops. Then we call it generalized acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus. So the word acute is very important because the history is small. Okay? Suddenly the lesions have appeared. What is the subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus? When it is not acute, it is not chronic. It is subacute, right? Lesions have been there for some time, and another lupus erythematosus lesion has been uh, superimposed. Okay, the the morphology of subacute cutaneous LE is classically, and it is the most morphologically variate variable uh, LE. It has all types of all types, many 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 morphological types. The non-scarring ones have are non papillous squamous lesions, annular lesions, and polycyclic lesions. These are the non-scarring types of subacute cutaneous LE, right? Then there could be vesiculation, there could be crusting, there could be hypopigmentation, there could be telangiectasias, there could be alopecia, there is photosensitivity, very importantly, and Reynolds phenomena are the other features of subacute cutis LE along with these typical morphological lesions. Okay. Which are the most common sites? Most common sites are above waist, as we all know. Lower back is foot, not a photo exposed, usually photo exposed sites, necks and arms. Neck and arms, right? These are the sites for subacute cutis LE. Here, acute LE is altogether a different game. Systemic involvement in subacute cutis LE is 35%. You know, it, it, it spreads, it, it goes inside the body, it involves organs, it involves systemically, right? How do you diagnose? There's a battery of tests, of blood tests. First of all, anti-nuclear antibody, non, which is not specific. When it comes positive, <clears throat> then you go for another test, which is a part of ANA profile, which is called anti-RO. Another one is anti-LA. We call it anti-RO and anti-LA. So RO-LA is the mnemonic for subacute LE after the ANA has been positive. Right. Next, chronic this chronic uh, LE. Another word name is discoid lupus erythematosus. DLE is a chronic disease, be present since a long time. Okay, more or less the same type. The morphology is very characteristic and self-diagnostic. Now, DLE it is relatively benign disorder of the skin, which is morphologically characterized by well-defined erythematous scaly plaques, which tend to heal with atrophy. Okay. Atrophy is the thing 
which demarcates it from the other types of any scarring post atrophy and pigmentary changes okay the classical sign which is seen only in dle is the tin tack or carpet tack sign okay there are adherent crusts the crusts are adherent or scales are adherent to the lesion when you remove it you find a small tin when you remove the tin bottle uh, you know, all of you have opened coke cans it has a pup like uh, thing on the uh, on the top which is called the lid okay so when you pop the lid how it comes out the same way those adherent scales are there which are stuck there when you take them out there is a uh, depression uh, in the skin and elevated uh, thing on the skin right dearly when you see it's classic okay the histology also is classical with mucin <clears throat> now sle is characterized by a female preponderance when you find a female with a uh, rash on the face it is sle okay go go towards the sle young females young females won't get it it will get it second to fourth decade we have normally seen in the third decade family history is present in Four to five percent of cases. Genetic factors associated with DLE are HLA association, HLA B seven, and HLA B eight. So this is a inherited disorder with a genetic linkage. This is chronic cutaneous. We have already seen subacute cutaneous and acute cutaneous, right? Right. Let's go ahead. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is the classic discoid rash. You can see erythema around the lesion. Okay, central hyperpigmentation, scaling. When you remove the scales, tin tack sign gets positive. Atrophy is there. Slowly, it heals with scarring. This is a classical discoid lesion. Discoid. What do you mean by discoid? Disc-like. Okay, doesn't look look like this discoid. And it comes suddenly. It's called rash, right? So it's a discoid lupus erythematosus, right? Diagnosis. How to diagnose? How to get to the? How to, how to know? How to know the diagnosis of uh, DLE, right? As I said earlier, the histopathology is classical. What are the histopathological features? Not seen in anything else. When you see them, it is DLE, right? Now, already told. In in morphology, there's epidermal atrophy, right? Shrinking of that epidermal layers. Basal cell is liquefied. There's liquefactive degeneration of the basal layer. The dermis infiltration is classically lymphocytic, right? Lymphocytic dermal infiltrate, right? And a classical bodies which are seen only in the histopathology called the Sivat bodies. Right, this is the DLE histopathology. Do does DLE uh, have a differential diagnosis? Some something else can be confused with DLE. Sometimes PMLE or polymorphous light eruption, morphia with its scarring, lichen planus with its pigmentation, lupus vulgaris with its annular structure, sarcoidosis with its annular structure, can mimic various stages of DLE. Right, so differential diagnosis also is present, but it's when you look, the whole picture is very classical. Now, the worrisome, worrisome fact about cutaneous LE is its conversion and involvement of the body systems or the organs, which is the cause of morbidity and mortality in LE. It does not kill LE. Leads to complications in body organs, which slowly and steadily leads to more mor morbidity and mortality. Now, what is systemic LE? Systemic LE, a systemic disease with immunopathological abnormalities affecting various skin parts. Basically, the skin already discussed, joints and vasculature. Okay. 
vessels are involved, joints are involved, skin is involved, right? Then females are put a preponderant, females have more incidence. Adult, early adult life is the onset of systemic LA. What are the clinical features of a systemic lupus erythematosus? Fever, no. Fever in 52% of cases of patients, lymphadopathy, arthritis, and arthralgia. Okay, there's a difference between arthritis and arthralgia. Arthralgia is plain <coughs> pain and swelling of the joints. Arthritis is radiologically degeneration and radiological changes in the, the joints and sino uh, and uh, joints okay joints are involved particularly the large joints in SLE large joints in rheumatoid arthritis small joints okay right so continuous lesions there are some specific lesions there are some non specific lesions we have already discussed them vasculature involvement first thing is vasoconstriction, heat, uh, cold sensitivity, something which is a classical of collagen vascular diseases, the Reynolds phenomena, okay? Reynolds phenomena is characterized by a, uh, by a mnemonic of WBC, white, blue, crimson. When you dip your hand, when you dip the hand of the patient in cold water, initially there's vasoconstriction. So all the blood flows away. Color, come, color becomes white. When the blood comes in, it comes slowly because there's vasoconstriction, blue comes out. Okay. And then lastly, it is red. And Reynolds phenomena, mind you, is painful. It is troublesome. It is harassing to the patient. It is troubling to the patient. Right. This phenomena <coughs> does lead to more, more morbidity, a lot of morbidity. The mortality part and the getting ill part is taken care of by the renal involvement. When there's renal involvement, it could be both types. It could be a glomerulonephritis. It could be nephrotic syndrome. Okay. So when a kidney is involved in SLE, you had it. Okay. So patients are troubled long more, more, more morbidity periods with renal involvement. Okay, renal failures, very common. Mortality, renal. No lung, pleural effusion, alveolitis, interstitial lung diseases. Sera, sera, it's called serositis. Okay, lung has pleura, Card, cardiac has parenchyma, heart has parenchyma. Okay, so serositis is a very important feature of SLE, a part of the criteria also. In lungs, we've seen pleural effusion, agulitis, interstitial lung disease, and cardiac, heart, pericarditis, pericardial infusion, okay? Transudates, exudates, myocardial infarction, and Leibman sacs of types of endocarditis. These are the systemic involvements. CNS, or the central nervous system, migraine, epilepsy, neuropathy, gut and GIT, vasculitis of gut, ascites, pancreatitis, and autoimmune hepatitis, right? Splenomegaly, cirrhosis, and hepatitis, blood, when it involves blood, involves all cell lines, pancytopenia, all cell lines depressed. RBC is depressed, anemia. WBC depressed, leukopenia. Platelets depressed, thrombocytopenia. Multiple features, anemic and, uh, eyes, paler, multiple infections, bleedings, everything. Hematologically, it's a nightmare. Eyes, conjunctivitis, episcleritis, and retinal vasculitis. What are the cutaneous lesions of LE. Which lesions are specific to LE? Which lesions are not specific to LE? What are the specific lesions of LE? According to the classification of the morphology. Acute cutaneous LE, 
What is the classical feature? We discussed earlier. Butterfly, malar, rash, right? Or a moribelliform for distributed rash. Second, subacutaneous LE has typical annular psoriasis form polycyclic lesions, mimicking psoriasis, right? Dry, scaly, well-defined plaques, right? SCLE or subacute, subacute cutaneous LE. Chronic cutaneous LE, discoid rash or discoid lupus erythematosus. Variants of chronic cutaneous lupus erythematosus is a plaque type of CCLE. When the fat component is involved by the lupus, it is it leads to a painful, excruciating, painful condition called lupus paniculitis. There is hypertrophic lesions in CCLE, swelling of the particular lesion, tumor LE, chilblain type of CCLE, and mucosal type of CCLE. These are the types of cutaneous lesions in chronic cutaneous lupus erythematosus. See, these are the lesions. This is a classical female in its 20s, 30s. See where it's involving. It is bilaterally symmetrically involving the cheeks and the nose. So, how does it look like? Does it look like a butterfly? Yes, it does. So, butterfly rash. It's got malar butterfly rash. So, you can't find a butterfly rash anywhere else on the skin, but SLE or ACLE, right? Oral mucosal LE will present as oral ulcers. There are many regions which are non-specific to LE, but they are found in, in the patients of LE. When you find them, you have you should have a suspicion of LE. No, do, do not specific regions of LE, but they are hinting towards LE. Right? Now let's start to vasculature. I just read them out. Okay, there are many, many lesions. You can just start reading them out, right? Telangiectasia, purpura, thrombophlebitis, Renaud's phenomena, libido reticularis, or erythema multiforme like lesions, targetoid lesions are seen in vascular types of or a vascular involvement of any. Hair involved leads to tupus hair, alopecia areata and scarring type of alopecia. Because membrane lesions, nail lesions, multiple calcinosis cutis like lesions, you know, bullous lesions, articarial lesions, abnormal pigmentations, sclerodactyly or sclerodermatous changes can be seen along. It is not a classical feature of this, but you know, it, it happens in LA also. Papillary nodular mucinosis, anetoderma, eye can plainness like lesions, porphyria, cutanea, tarda like lesions. Which are the specific subsets or clinical subsets of LE? LE in pregnancy, neonatal LE, drug induced LE, childhood LE, and LE with LP. Or called Rowell syndrome, LELP overlap. How to go about a patient of LE, investigative part, okay? In CBC, you see depression of all the cell lines, anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, okay? Do a, do a CBC, everything depressed, think of LE. ESR will be raised, it's an, okay, ESR raised. Do an analysis, do an do an atrogen, serum creatinine, see for kidney health. Can have you can have false positive VDRL and a false positive RF factor. So don't get confused. If you have a classical rash of LE and a positive VDRL, don't think it is secondary syphilis. Okay, take it the pinch of salt. Go ahead, do other tests of LE and then come to a diagnosis. You can't play around with this diagnosis, right? Now, next test is LE cell test. Nowadays, 
ANA or antinuclear antibody by immunofluorescence is the gold standard screening test for LE. Okay, when you have a positive LE or uh, ANA, you might have LE, you might have other CTDs also, but suspicion of LE increases. So screen, you're screening it out. How do you specifically diagnose uh, SLE? By specific antibodies in the NA profile called anti-DNA, DSDNA, anti-Smith, SM, anti-histone, cryoglobulins, and serum complement levels, right? And on the direct immunofluorescence microscopy, you find a positive lupus band test. These are the specific types of tests for any in the in the investigative or pathological biochemistry levels right as i told you ana is a very important test for diagnose screening out and diagnosing any the ana is done by immunofluorescence pattern okay Immunofluorescence method. There are various patterns in immunofluorescence which is seen uh, in uh, SLE. So, diagnosis helps, becomes easier. Now, when the NA pattern comes out to be peripheral, predominant antigen is NDNA, the disease will be SLE. So, peripheral ANA positivity is SLE. Homogeneous pattern will be seen in histones and NDNA again, again suggestive SLE. Nucleolar pattern, the predominant antigen will be nucleolar RNA, which is, which is positive in systemic sclerosis and SLE both. Centromere, classical of Crest syndrome, keratophore is the antigen. Speckled pattern, various RNPs are antigens and multiple uh, possibilities are there. MCTD, SLE, systemic sclerosis, jogger. So, peripheral and homogeneous patterns are more specific to SLE. Right? Next. What are the criteria for diagnosis of SLE? There is a American College of Rheumatology ACR criteria. Right? What are the criteria? First and foremost is the Mailer rash. Second is the discoid rash. Third is presence of photosensitivity. Fourth, oral ulcers. Fifth, non-erosive arthritis. Zero negative arthritis. Serocytis, UDC or pericarditis. This is involvement. Persistent proteinuria on 24-hour urine protein, more than 0.5 gram per day, or cellular casts in urine microscopy. Neurological disorders like seizures or psychosis. Hematological criteria, hemolytic anemia or leukopenia, WBC is less than 4000, lymphopenia, lymphocytes less than 1500 per millimeter square, or thrombocytopenia less than 1 lakh per millimeter square. Immunological findings for positive ANA, then positive LE cell or positive anti DNA, anti SM bodies. I have enumerated a lot of criteria. Now, how many required for diagnosis? Need to have four or more. Okay, minimum of four out of all these is required for a definitive diagnosis of systemic lupus and rheumatosis. Right? Things become easier now. Right? Now, another <coughs> grouping, another criteria. This time it is Systemic Lupus International Collaborating Clinics, SLICC criteria. What are the criteria here? Acute or subacute cutaneous lupus, chronic cutaneous lupus, oral nasal ulcers, non scarring alopecia, inflammatory sinusitis, sinovitis, serositis, renal RBC casts. Urine protein or at least 500 gram milligram of protein, and 500 milligram protein for 24 hours. Neurological, hemolytic anemia, lympho, leukopenia less than 4000, or at least once, or lymph, lymphopenia less than 1000, at least once. 
Next, remove hydropenia. Okay, what are the immunological criteria? ANA above reference range, anti DSDNA above lab reference range, range, anti Smith antibodies, anti phospholipid antibodies, low complement levels, low C3, low C4, low CH50. In the absence of hemolytic anemia, direct positive comb test. Okay, hemolytic anemia is not there, but direct comb test is positive. Right? Now, in SLICC criteria, what is required? A patient may be classified as having SLE if the patient has biopsy proven lupus nephritis with ANA or DSGN antibody or as a satisfying four criteria, including at least one clinical or one immunological. Okay, a little more complicated than the ARA criteria, but that's the fact. Next, you've got your diagnosis criteria, you had your uh, types of lesions, you had your investigative backup, you had your criteria, and you had your classifications. Now, come to the reality realm. Now, treat it. That you, the patient is in front of you. You've made the diagnosis. You've got to the diagnosis of SLE. Now, help the patient start treatment. Right? The patient might have diseases in various types. He might, or he, she, she might have a mild disease. Some lesions here and there, um, or, or only photosensitivity, no systemic involvement, or quality of life is not that compromised. So, how do you treat? Use NSAIDs, topical therapies, antimalarials like hydroxychloroquine. The disease is severe, or involvement is involvement of systems is there. Systemic steroids come into picture. When systemic steroids come into picture, some other sparing uh, immunosuppression also have to be. So systemic steroids can be used for a long time. You can't kill the patient with steroids, right? Now, what are the steroids sparing immunosuppressants? There's a thiaprin, cyclophosphamide, mycophenolate, morphotel. Nowadays, there's a craze about biologics and biosimilars. Okay? So immunology plays a long role. Drugs also are targeting those immunological things now. Okay, what is, rituximab is the first drug which is now easily in, uh, available and very rapidly, uh, very rapidly used. It's a monoclonal antibody targeting CD20 receptor cells, protein on the surface of B cells. Okay, now what it helps, it helps mostly in arthritis of SLE and proteinuria. So kidney, mainly kidney, right? Now we've got through, you've gotten through SLE. We now come to morphia. Morphia is another systemic disorder of the skin. Connective tissue disorder, okay? It is defined by sclerosis. It is confined to skin, sclerosis or thickness of skin, right? Confined to the skin, localized. Or generalized, it is termed morphia. Female to male ratio, even greater than SLE, 3 is to 1. Onset, second to fourth decade. Prestrating factors like trauma, vaccination, radiotherapy, hormonal factors, Borrelia infection, measles, and silicone implants. Right? Which are the types of morphias? Plaque type, morphia and plaque. Gutted morphia, keloid morphia, nodular morphia, atrophoderm of Pacini and Perini. Then there's generalized morphia. There could be a bullless variant of morphia. The classically linear morphia is there, <coughs> wherein if it involves the uh, forehead and goes up to the scalp, it's called encoded saber. It leads to when it, involved, when it is uh, present with progressive heavy facial atrophy, okay, it is called it, it, the syndrome called uh, when encoding saber and progressive heavy facial atrophy is present called as Parry Romberg syndrome, right? Deep morphia, wherein sub subcutaneous morphia, eosinophilic fasciitis. Morphia profundus, disabling pansclerotic morphia, and the severe variants. 
what are the clinical features the plaque types of plaque types are round to oval indurated plaques with lilac border lilac border as classical see okay heal slowly with residual pig hyperpigmentation multiple lesions are there with asymmetrical distribution sites are limb trunks left trunk limbs face okay there are three stages of morphia erythema erythematous stage edematous stage and atrophic stage three stages right now linear morphia linear morphia the plaques of morphia are arranged linearly mainly on limbs and it is present on a specific site here here okay it's called and could be saber that means somebody has hit you with an x you know saber saber rattling you know saber is a x and somebody hits you on the head for the x it is it causes a depression here it is called n kudi saber type of linear morphia see this is n kudi saber doesn't look like somebody has hit her with the x how do you treat morphia transinone azetonide injections in the lesions of morphia penicillamine 300 to 600 mg per day phenytoin diphen diphenyl hydantoin or phenytoin systemic steroids immunosuppressive like cyclosporin topical vitamin d3 analogs topical tacrolimus then procedures like physiotherapy phototherapy physiotherapy plasma phenesis and plastic surgery for debilitating or cosmetically bad lesions okay this is the treatment in short now morphia was a localized variety now what happens when this morphia like lesions involve the whole body or systems it is called systemic sclerosis sclerosis is thickening it is a multi system autoimmune disorder characterized by vascular abnormalities connective tissue sclerosis and atrophy look at the female to male ratio 5.2 to 1 so there is only five females to one male look how common it is in females fourth decade onset etiopathogenesis it is a complex autoimmune disease characterized by immune activation lead to fibrosis of skin and obliterative or necrotic blocking the small vessels obliterative vascularity right what is the classification of scleroderma according to the skin sclerosis involvement right one is limited cutaneous scleroderma skin sclerosis of only fingers with or without mild sclerosis of face neck and armpits so limited to areas majorly on the fingers so yes, sclerodactyly diffuse cutaneous scleroderma diffuse and truncal sclerosis coming to the body above the neck liberal cutaneous below the neck diffuse cutaneous trunk okay now immediate cutaneous scleroderma what is immediate cutaneous scleroderma it is sclerosis of upper and lower limbs neck and face without trunk okay what is sign scleroderma 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 without skin lesions no skin only scleroderma of the body visceral involvement without skin lesions right how do you know it by tablescopic changes in serum and auto antibodies so scleroderma not involved in the derma right sign scleroderma what other cutaneous features of scleroderma one most common here is renaud's phenomena why it happens vasoconstriction blockage of the small arteries right hide bound skin is classical classical scleroderma facies which look like mask like facies no expression pinched or beak like appearance of the nose nose is very thin radial furrows around the mouth no? okay very old lady she looks like but she not that old furrows around the mouth and thinning of the upper lip 
pursing of the mouth. Can't open the mouth. You cannot open the whole mouth. Restricted opening of the mouth, right? Pigmentation, mottled or hyperpigmentation is there. Salt, pepper. It is called salt and pepper. Swelling of hands and joints, atrophy of this of the uh, joints. <clears throat> yeah, joints are getting atrophic, mind you. Fingers and legs ulcers, digital gangrene, stellate scars. The cause of this obliterative vasculopathy. I told you in the previous slide. Nail fold ligatasias are commonest. So we do a nail fold capillaroscopy to diagnose it. Calcinosis lesions are there on the skin. Ah, look at this. Look at this lady. Look at her nose. Look at her, her face. Face is open, not open at all. There are stellate or pitted scars on the finger finger pads. Okay, they are stellate ulcers of scleroderma, classically due to obliterative vasculopathy. This is on the skin. Now the body. Most common classically, gastrointestinal uh, involvement is there by esophageal dysfunction. Very common. Okay. Malabsorption, primary biliary cirrhosis, autoimmune hepatitis. In the joints, arthritis, tendon friction rubs. In the kidney, most severe is scleroderma, renal crisis, is leading to mortality. Interstitial lung disease and permanently hypertension. Lung is very commonly involved in scleroderma. Cardiac, myocardial disease, pericardial involvement in muscles. Scleroderma associated myopathy. Okay, more common in diffuse types. How do you diagnose? Another set of criteria again. In 2013, ACR or EULAR criteria was there, was postulated. What is it? Skin thickening of fingers extending proximal to metacarpophalangeal joint. It is sufficient to diagnose SSC. Right? If this is not present, skin thickness of fingers proximal to MCP is not there, then skin thickening of fingers of skin, oh, skin of fingers, fingertip lesions, stellar ulcers, telangiectasias, abnormal nail fold capillary, capillary interstitial lung disease, or pulmonary artery hypertension, the Nord's phenomena, or classical antibodies to systemic sclerosis, anti-centromia, anti, anti isomerase, and anti-RNP3. Investigations in serology, ANA. ANA is positive, then go for a profile. Anti-centromere antibody is present, it is crest. Anti-SCL70 is present, it is scleroderma or systemic sclerosis. In pulmonary function test, detect fibrotic changes. In histopathology, hyalization, homogenization of collagen, dermal lymphatic infiltrate. In ECG, rhythm and conduction abnormalities. In ECO, there is pulmonary artery hypertension. In GIT, esophageal manometry is done, endoscopy is done, and barium studies are done. Okay. How do you treat? There is not phenomena, so keep your fingers warm. How do you keep them warm? Don't put fingers in water and use gloves. For a not phenomena, in mild cases, we need nifedipine. In severe cases, we need sildenafil, iloprost, and low molecular weight dextra. Systemic corticosteroids, always there. Immunosuppressants like methotrexate, cyclosamide, penicillamine, colchicine interference have all been tried. Symptomatic treatment for cardiac, renal, and GI symptoms. What we have finished? Let's do a, let's take a jump back. We have seen lipoxylomatosis. We have seen morphia. We have seen systemic sclerosis. What is next in line? Dermatomyositis. It is an idiopathic inflammatory myopathy characterized by muscle weakness, cutaneous eruptions. As common with all connective tissue disorders, females will be more involved. There is a bimodal peak here. Childhood dermatomyositis is there. Adult dermatomyositis is there. First peak is in childhood. 
another peak is in elderly 50 to 70 years associations of actually b8 drb1 drqa1 and drqa1 0301 are c infections can lead to dermatomyositis which infections grade a beta Group A, sorry, group A, beta hemolytic streptococci, toxoplasma, Coxsackie virus, UV radiation exposure. Drugs which cause dermatomyositis are D, penicillamine, tamoxifen, interf uh, interferons, and penicillin. What are the continuous features of dermatomyositis? Classically, Gottrell papules and Gottrell sign. What are these? Gottrell papules are violaceous papules overlying the dorsal, interphalangeal, and metacarpophalangeal joints, elbows, and knees. Okay, these are the Gottrell papules. This is the side. This and this. What is the Gottrell sign? Gottrell sign is erythematous or violaceous erythema with or without edema. Okay. What is it called? CMVA. Okay. Circumferential violaceous erythema. Uh, macular violaceous erythema, MVA. What are the characteristic collisions? Heliotrop rash, heliotrop erythema and macular violaceous erythema or the deltoids posterior shoulders, nape of the neck, upper chest, forehead, and doors of hands. Okay? There are many signs here, no? Shawl sign. Sh uh, then, uh, many signs associated with the CMVA, the uh, macular violation of the regima, or different sites. When it's in the trunk, it is called the shawl sign. When it is on the uh, uh, waist, it is called Shester sign. Many signs are there. Cutaneous calcinosis is more common in juvenile dermatomyositis in 40 to 75 percent of cases. Classical heliotrope rash around the eyes. You can see swelling, heliotrope rash, violaceous macular erythema, bottles papules, classical. What are the cutaneous manifestations of? There are some commons, there are some uncommon. Heliotrope sign, iridema, Gottel's papules, Gottel's sign, pro-distributed poikiloderma, which includes facial edema, shawl sign, v-neck sign, scalp poikiloderma and scaling, non-scaling alopecia, ragged cuticles, cuticular hypertrophy, nade fold telangiate tevias, Holster sign, not Shuster, Holster sign. Holster sign is Bertoldama of the lateral thighs. So, as you form lesions, calcius cutis, mainly in juvenile, juvenile variant of dermatomyositis. Which are uncommon? Cutis erosions or ulcerations, flagellate erythema, tender palmar papules, hyperkeratotic palmar papules, exfoliate erythema, erythroderma. Okay. Then, yes, cutis eruptions that mimics PRP. The singular bullous lesions, pustular, ovoid, gingival epithelia, paniculitis, lipoatrophy, small vessel vasculitis. Okay, they are all seen in uncommonly, and these are common ones. Systemic involvements are the myositis, as the name suggests, muscles are mostly involved. Progressive, symmetrical, proximal muscle weakness or myopathy. Pharyngeal and respiratory muscles can also be involved. In joints, there is non-erosive arthritis, usually an early manifestation, juvenile DM, pulmonary aspiration pneumonia, interstitial lung disease, hyperventilation, erythemas, conduction abnormalities, and myocarditis in cardiac system, dysphagia, esophageal reflux in GI system. Mohan and Peter did postulate some criteria for diagnosis of DM or dermatomyositis. Symmetrical muscle weakness, both sides. 
elevation of muscle enzymes cpk a and h abnormal emg electromyography muscle biopsy results and a typical heliotrope or cmva rash of dm what the definite diagnosis is one is the rash rash is essential no rash no dermatomyositis and three of the remaining four criteria right what are the four criteria muscle weakness enzymes emg and biopsy three of the four which enzymes cpk sgot sgpt ldh ldolase ck mm fraction the muscle mass fraction is the most specific for skeletal muscle muscle biopsy emg mri and serology which serology na screening test specific are anti jo1 anti mi1 mi2 sorry son thimer proposed diagnostic criteria for cutaneous dermatomyositis it requires two major criteria or one major and two minor criteria and skin biopsy changes consistent with dermatomyositis very major criteria only three heliotrope rash water and spapule water and sign minor criteria lot of them macular violation is redima scalp or anterior hairline malar eminence of face on uh, i mean macular violation is redima on the scalp face v of the neck posterior neck posterior shoulder or shawl sign extensors of the arms and forearms linear streaking or lying extensor tendons of dorsal hands very angular skin lateral thighs holster sign middle malalai okay nail fold capillary tear tesia follicular derma mechanics hands tenuous calcinosis trace ulcers and pruritus two major one major and one minor and characteristic skin biopsy changes right how do you treat dermatomyositis corticosteroids systemic corticosteroids means take steroid sparing agents methotrexate mycophenolate mofetil cyclophosphamide and thiopril first choice among the adjuvants is methotrexate in refractory cases of dermatomyositis intravenous immunoglobulin rituximab anti c20 antibody exercise physical therapy for muscle mass regaining cutaneous lesions need sunscreen and chloroquine hydroxychloroquine in calcinosis alentronate diltiazem excision of the large three are over sle systemic sclerosis mctd okay mctd involves predominantly females there are features of cyst sle sclerosis dermatomyositis and polymyositis all in one specific antibody to human rnp is the classical finding not phenomena arthritis arthralgia sausage fingers swelling of hands photosensitivity sl like rash abnormal esophageal motility impaired pulmonary diffusion capacity myositis aseptic meningitis psychosis trigeminal neuropathy mgd over jogren syndrome xerostomia with keratoconjunctivitis sicca what are the features the rosses generalized pruritus loss of sweating diffuse alopecia recurrent annular erythema not phenomena non thrombocytopenic purpura articular vasculitis necrotizing vasculitis splinter hemorrhages and gangrene rheumatoid arthritis now coming to rheumatoid arthritis what are specific manifestations rheumatoid nodules is the most frequent extra articular manifestation granulomatous dermatitis linear erythematous to violaceous subcutaneous bands in axillary trunk in aspect of thighs rheumatoid vasculitis erythema gangrenosum fatty syndrome juvenile onset ra non specific manifestations are palmar erythema scleroderma like changes 
periangual erythema, splinter hemorrhages, bluish discoloration of fingers. What is the APLA or anti phospholipid antibody syndrome? There are primary and secondary. Primary is, you know, primary. Secondary causes of APLA involved in include autoimmune connective tissue disorders, Takayasu's arthritis, bacterial viral infections, malignancies, and renal failure dialysis. 40% of lesions uh, of patients have cutaneous lesions. Most common of them is levido reticularis. Others, other morphological lesions, necrotizing vasculitis, thrombophlebitis, cutaneous ulcers, leading to gangrene, leading to necrosis, leading to purpura, erythematous macules, ecchymotis, painful skin nodules, erythroderma, atrophy blanchy like lesions and subangual splinter hemorrhages. Okay, what have we learned today? We learned connective tissue disorders. Let's enumerate systemic sclerosis. Morphia, then we had systemic sclerosis. Then we had dermatomyositis. Then we had rheumatoid arthritis. Then we had Jogren's syndrome. Then we had mixed connective tissue disorders. And lastly, we had rheumatoid arthritis and anti phospholipid antibody syndrome. I hope you must have learned a lot today in this lecture. And hopefully, now onwards, you will have a good time at least understanding and classifying these connective tissue autoimmune diseases. So this is Dr. Akhil Shah, Professor in Skin and VD, signing off. Thank you very much. Rajesh?